Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, so in uh, wire antenna uh, theory and design, we have discussed on dipole antenna. Now, in this uh, topic, we are going to discuss on Yagi Uda antenna. Okay, Yagi Uda antenna, we uh, have commonly seen uh, this antenna used as aerial TV. Uh, and it is typically consists of a number of parallel tin rod elements and its length is about half f length so these are the rod elements and those uh, elements are supported on a perpendicular crossbar or also known as boom so this is boom Okay, so Yagi Uda antenna usually designed uh, within 30 megahertz to 3 gigahertz frequency. And the advantage of Yagi Uda antenna, high gain, high directivity and high front to back ratio. Uh, it is low cost and lightweight. And uh, the disadvantages of Yagi Uda antenna, it is lengthy, especially for high gain design. And it has gain limitation of about 20 dB maximum and it prone to noise and atmospheric effect. Okay, we can see when uh, during the raining uh, or windy season, so the Yagi Udantina may be easily uh, moved so that the reception will be a bit, the TV signal or reception will be distorted because it is highly directive. So once uh, the antenna is, uh, the uh, orientation uh, change so the signal uh, reception may be uh, distorted as well so some uh, applications of Yagi Uda antennas are the amateur radio and also TV antenna and the frequency ranges uh, usually within the VHF and UHF frequency bands okay next the construction of Yagi Uda antenna so um, it consists of two main components, which are the driven components elements, the driven elements, and also the uh, parasitic. So the parasitic consists of the reflector and also the directors. All right, so the first one is the driven element. Alright, so this is the uh, driven element usually placed uh, in the second form from uh, the end of the Yagi Una structure. So it is typically a, a half wave length dipole or a folded dipole. And this is the only structure that being fed or being excited electrically uh, within the Yagi Uda antenna. Right, so usually in practical, we'll see there's a black start. Uh, that shows where the fit point is. Okay, next we have the parasitic element, the reflector. Okay, the reflector uh, is usually placed at the back of the um, driven element and it is usually the longer structure in the Yaguna antenna uh, design and it's about 5% longer than the driven element and the, the reflector will reflect all energy uh, driven by the uh, driven element uh, towards the intended so you will reflect so the, for example there's a, a wave here so the reflector will reflect it back towards the intended direction so this uh, reflector element is important in determining the uh, front-to-back ratio of the antenna. And the other components of the parasitic element is the directors. So usually place uh, on the front end of the uh, driven element. So the number of the directors may vary from 1 to 20. So if we have more directors, so uh, it will improve the directivity uh, of the uh, design itself. So its length is about 5% shorter than the driven element. So the uh, directors will re-radiate the power they receive from the driven element 
and uh, the width from the individual uh, uh, directors will be added up uh, and those uh, waves will be directed towards the intended direction in this case uh, the intended direction will be on the right hand side okay this is how the uh, Yagyu antenna uh, works so the uh, driven element in this case the green one okay this is the driven element okay so it uh, being excited and the wave generated by the driven element propagate in both forward and backward okay so the radio wave from each element are emitted with a phase delay Okay, so in case of the upward uh, direction, so in the, the individual wave received by the um, directors are in uh, phase delay. So the forward waves then will be added up together. So it will enhance the overall power in the intended direction. So this is called constructive interference in which uh, the wave from the individual uh, directors will be added up together. So the total uh, waves then will be directed uh, to the intended direction. While for the backward waves, okay, the backward wave received by the reflector will basically uh, out of phase. Okay, it will partially cancel uh, the uh, the waves caused uh, due to the phase delay. Okay, uh, because usually the reflector is uh, half uh, half uh, about five percent longer than the driven element, so it has inductive reactance, which means that the phase of its current lacks the phase of the voltage. So it will reduce the uh, it will produce phase delay uh, of 90 to 180 degree. So it produce out of phase wave in which it will cancel the uh, emitted wave from the uh, driven element. So the energy will not be uh, propagated backward. So it will reflect back upward. So it will reduce or it will minimize the back backward radiation and the reflected wave will be added up together with the uh, waves from the, um, the reflectors. So towards the intended propagation direction. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, so by referring to these figures, we have the driven element, the excited element here. So we have the reflector. So the reflector will reflect back uh, the uh, wave or signal they receive. It received from the driven element. So it partially, uh, pas uh, part of the uh, radiated wave will be reflected ba back, and uh, some of it will be. Uh, directed in backward radiation but with just very minor back loop while the rest will be reflected back towards the intended direction while for the uh, directors okay this is the driven element so this is the forward wave so the directors if you have more than one directors so the individual or uh, waves receive or uh, by the directors will be added up so it will produce or it will enhance the power or direct directivity of the uh, waves and it will be directed into the uh, intended direction so this is what happened when the length of the parasitic element so uh, is larger or shorter than uh, lambda over 2 while the driven element is usually within uh, lambda over 2 length okay this is the uh, Yagi Uda configuration so as mentioned earlier we have the driven element here so driven element 
All right, so the reflector place or position at the back of the driven element and the length of the reflector is R while the distance between the uh, driven element and also the reflector is uh, given as SR. So it's separation uh, distance between the reflector to the fit point or the driven element. While the director uh, element is of length di, so i representing the number of elements, so d1, d2, and so on, dn up to 20, and the distance between or the separation between the uh, the element uh, is given as sdi, the separation di distance between the uh, adjacent element of the directors. Right, these are the uh, typical uh, range of lengths and spacing between uh, the reflector, the driven element, or, and also the uh, directors. Okay, next, let's, let's look at the Yagyuda design procedures. So the basis of the design, we have uh, three items to be referred to during the design process. First is to refer to table 10.6 in which uh, it contains the optimized uncompensated lengths of parasitic element for your Yagyuda antenna for six different lengths. And next we need to refer to figure 10.25 which uh, have uh, the element lengths of Yagyuda arrays. Uh, according to different curves of the design. And lastly, we need to refer to figure 10.28, uh, the correction factor, uh, how much the parasitic element length need to be modified or increased uh, according to the uh, metal boom diameter. And table 10.6 is valid for uh, the the ratio of d over lambda so the small letter d is for the element diameter and capital letter d is for the boom uh, metal diameter and uh, the total elements up to 15 and there's six preferred wavelengths uh, listed in the table 10.6 these are how the table 10.6 looks like in which you have the optimized uncompensated lengths of parasitic element so we need to know the design parameters what the targeted directivity and then from there we can estimate the spacing between the directors so the uh, spacing between the reflector and uh, the feeder uh, fixed at 0 0.2 lambda and these are the length of the uh, directors okay the length of the directors and we are about to know how many elements uh, needed in the design based on the specification given and uh, we can know the length of the reflector as well and the overall length of the uh, structure and the sec in the second step, we need to refer to figure 10.25, which uh, in which we can determine the element length, okay, based on the uh, diameter of the uh, elements. And we have the different curve A, B, C, D. So, so we need to refer to the table. So, from uh, in the table, it will. Uh, state in uh, in which curve basically uh, the design will be considered based on the specification we have. Okay, lastly, we need to refer to the correction factor figure. So it will tell us the uh, how much increment in the length uh, so that we can uh, calculate the final length of the elements in the final design based on the uh, wavelength of D. So the, for example, the boom diameter. OK, 
okay, diameter is given as, for example, 10 cm. So we can calculate the boom diameter in the ratio of D over lambda. So lambda is based on the operating frequency of the design. Okay, the next two slides summarizes the steps that you need to uh, follow in order to design uh, a Yagiwada antenna. So first, we need to identify or specify the design parameters, including the directivity, gain, frequency, input impedance, diameter of elements, D and the boom diameter D, uh, capital letter D. Next, we need to identify or calculate the wavelength of the desired frequency. So lambda equal to C over F. C is the, is the speed of light. And the third step, we need to calculate the ratio between the uh, diameter of the element D of lambda and also the diameter of the boom of lambda. Okay, if a D over lambda, if the ratio between the uh, diameter of element over lambda equal to 0 0.0085, so no element diameter correction required. So you can just proceed to the next step, uh, step 8, uh, in which you just need to have to refer to the correction factor for the final calculation. Okay, step number 4, you need to choose the element from table 6, uh, 10.6 followed by plot the length of element from the values you have from table 10.6 into figure 10.25 okay, uh, according to the uh, reflector as element 1 so you usually determine as L1 followed by the directors element L3 onwards L4 and so on depending on number of element you have in your design Next step, step 6, you need to draw a vertical line on figure uh, 10.25 as well. So from here, uh, you will identify the uncompensated length of the, uh, the design or the elements. Next, you need to, cal to calculate the difference between uh, the elements length for example, you have uh, the L3 and L4, so you need to calculate uh, the difference between the L3 length and L4 length. And the same uh, factor or the, the same difference uh, may be used in calculating the uncompensated length. So this is L3 prime, so for uncompensated length is L prime 3 and L prime 4. And then correct the element length according to boom diameter. So you need to refer to figure 10.28 later and check the correction factor, how much the length needs to be increased in order to get the final length of the design. So let's look at an example. So design a Yagiwida array with directivity relative to a lambda over 2 dipole of 9.2. Uh, dB at a frequency of 50.1 megahertz so you know that the frequency is equal to 50.1 megahertz so the first step is specify design parameters so you you may list out all the uh, parameters given to you so for ease of reference in your calculation later on and then uh, the desired diameter of the parasitic element so small letter d equal to 2.54 cm so please take note the unit use in the calculation and the metal supporting boom diameter is d equal to 5.1 cm okay then to determine uh, the required uh, characteristic element spacing length total array length and so on Okay, the second step, you need to calculate the wavelength. So the wavelength equal to C over F. So C is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, positive 8, divided by your F given is 50.1 mega. So this is equal to 5.988 meter. Okay, the third step, calculate the ratio of D over lambda and uh, capital D over lambda. So, 
uh, the given small letter d is equal to 2.54 so d over lambda and the unit is cm uh, and your wavelength is in meter so you need to take note on the uh, unit difference so consider that in your calculation as well so in this case your d is 2.54 times 10 to the power of minus 2 in meter divided by the lambda 5.8988 so it, it is equal to 0 0.00424 while the uh, capital D the boom diameter of lambda is given 5.1 cm so 5.1 cm divided by lambda 5.988 meter it is equal to 8.52 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, next, you need to refer to table 10.6. Okay, based on the uh, st uh, specification given in the uh, question, the directivity is equal to 9.2 dB. Right, so from the table, you can get the directivity. The, uh, the direct width is straight away 9.2 dB so meaning that you need to refer to this column right, in which the total length of the Yagi Uda structure should be 0.8 the length of the reflector R and you have how many components you have the directors 1, 2, 3 directors so 1 uh, driving element and 1 reflector so and don't forget to refer to the spacing between the directors so it is 0 0.2 and the design curve you need to refer to uh, line b in figure 10.25 so from here you know that you have this is the feeder or the driving uh, element and you have one reflector at the back this is the r and then you have the L3, L4, L5. So L3, L4, and L5. The directors. So you have the, this one is L3, L4, and L5. And the reflector is L1. So this is L1. And the spacing between directors are 0.2. between the elements is 0 0.2 and the spacing between the uh, reflector and also the driving element is fixed at 0 0.2 so the total length is 0 0.8 okay you have 0 0.8 total length of the Yagyuda structure okay uh, okay so we have all that so we need then to refer to figure 10.25 and look at the uh, curve b okay next you need to plot the lengths that you get from uh, figure 10.25 or from table 10.6 into figure 10.25 Okay, from the table just now, we have the L3, L4, and L5. So, and we need to refer only to curve B for both reflectors and directors. And then, to, uh, refer to the length of the uh, reflector, 0 0.482. So, the reflector, 0 0.482. This is 45, 46, 47, 48. So 0 0.482 is somewhere here. So you have L1 is here for the reflector. And we uh, we uh, put the notation as L1 double prime. And next is L3. So L3 is 0 0.428. So 0 0.4241, 42, 
4, 3. So 4, 2, 8 is somewhere here and crossing the B lines. So this is L3, double prime. And then L4, 0 0.424. Again, look at uh, the curve B. So 0 0.424 is somewhere here. So L4 prime, double prime is 0 0.424. And lastly, L5 equal to 0 0.428 in which it is equal to uh, L3. So it is here, L5 double prime. Okay, so from uh, this figure, you can also identify or calculate the, the difference, the, uh, the length difference. So 0 0.428. 428 minus 0 0.424 is around 4 milli. Okay, you need to use this uh, delta L in uh, the uncompensated length calculation in the next slide. Okay, next, you need to draw a vertical line for actual uh, D over lambda. D is the diameter of the element. So we have calculated earlier in the uh, second step. So d over lambda is equal to 0 0.00424. So you need to look at 0 0.00424 and then uh, draw a vertical line. So this is the vertical line for the uh, d over lambda. So next, you need to... Uh, plot the uncompensated length okay or the new uh, length of the elements and also the reflector so this is l1 for the reflector earlier so this is the one the the one that crossing uh, the vertical line is actually uh, the new the updated length so l prime one Okay, so same goes to the element. So between these two, we know that the delta L equal to 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So the farthest left is the L3 and L5. This is the earlier one. The L double prime 3 and L double prime 5. Also L double prime 4. So we put it as dot crossing the uh, curve B. So for the new uh, position, okay, crossing the vertical line, so we use the cross symbol. Alright, so the farthest between these two, uh, these three uh, elements, so the farthest left is L3 and L5. So we assume that the one that crossing the vertical line at curve B is the, the farthest left element. So in this case, this is the curve B. So we put it as cross at this point. So this represents the farthest left elements, which is L3 equal to L5 prime equal to. So the new value is somewhere here. Okay, so it is around uh, 0 0.442 and the L1 just now is around 0 0.485 lambda okay and from the delta L we have calculated earlier so we can estimate the, the position of L4 prime so in which L4 prime is uh, a bit right, far right to the L3 and L5 component. So L4 prime is equal to L3 prime minus delta L. In this case, the L4 prime is around 0 0.438. Okay, somewhere here, 
4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. So somewhere here. Alright. So this is L4 prime around 0 0.438 lambda. Okay, so this basically represents this step number 7 in which we have calculate the delta L and we have estimate the uncompensated length. Okay, so now let's list down the uncompensated length. So the L and prime. So we have the L1 prime equal to 0 0.485 lambda and then we have L3 uh, prime equal to L5 prime equal to 0 0.442 0 0.442 lambda and lastly we have the L4 prime equal to 0 0.438 lambda okay next we need to refer to figure 10.28 for the correction factors so we need to use the uh, ratio between the boom diameter over lambda so we have calculated this earlier in step 2 so the diameter is uh, the d over lambda equal to 8.52 times 10 to the power of minus 3 so we need to refer to figure 10.28 so it's 0 0.00852 so 006 Zero zero eight two four six eight. So here, so around here, so zero point zero eight around here. Okay, based on this value. Okay, so let's look at the the how much the increment of the length. Okay, so the length needs to be increased by 0 0.005. So the correction factor in this case equal to 0 0.005. So meaning that e, uh, all uh, each length of the elements that we have calculated in uh, step 7 need to be added up. So increase. So all L need to be added up by the correction factor of 0 0.005. So in this case, we have your final length L1 equal to L1 prime that we have had from step 7 plus the correction factor 0 0.005 lambda. So the final length is 0 0.49 lambda. And then same goes to other elements. So L3 pri uh, three equal to L5 in which it is equal to L3 prime plus 0 0.005 lambda which is equal to 0 0.447 lambda and this is also equal to L5 in which it is L5 prime plus the correction factor 0 0.005 lambda and lastly the L4 L4, the final length of the fourth element equal to L4 prime plus the correction factor 0, 0, 0, 0005 lambda which is equal to 0 0.04 sorry 0 0.443 lambda. Okay, once you have calculated all the uh, lengths, then you can draw your uh, design. So this is the driving element and then you have the reflector at the uh, at the back okay so the length of the reflector is l1 so in this case l1 equal to 0 0.49 lambda and then the spacing between them is 0 0.2 lambda and you have the uh, directors three directors so it is L1, L2, eh, sorry, L3, L4, and L5. And the length for L1, eh, sorry, L3 equal to 0 
0.447 lambda. Same goes to the fifth one, 0.447 lambda. And L4 equal to 0.443. 0.443 lambda. And the spacing between them is 0.2. Okay, same goes to uh, the distance between the driving element to the reflector. Okay, besides the uh, dipole-like Yagi-Uda array structure, uh, there's also Yagi-Uda array on uh, using circular loop structure. So, but this one will not be discussed in details in this course. With that, thank you.